thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dr. Smith, our host, and my colleague, Professor Figueroa, all friends and colleagues, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it is really very difficult to uh, conceptualize of a, a centenary in the context of Sir Arthur, simply because of a centenary suggests almost conjures up an, an, an image of a movement between space and time uh, in which you are allowed to reflect upon something that was once relevant. It does not conjure images of continuing rigor and relevance. And so from that point of view, the notion of a centenary is really an, an indulgence in celebration, simply because he is here very much alive, very relevant, and still extremely engaging. I have spent a fair amount of time in recent years in Ghana, which has become my second home. And uh, when I go there, um, one of the conversations in which I'm always engaged is the issue of the economic development of Ghana. And my former host, Dr. Victor Obing, uh, who passed away earlier this year, would always remind me that um, CRLR James once wrote this beautiful letter in which he says, there is a young chap called Nkrumah, and we need to support him because he's hell-bent on throwing the British out of Ghana. Uh, but after we have thrown out, then we have to develop the place. And to develop the place, there's a young man called Arthur Lewis. Go and get him, and he will complete the process. <laughs> and all of this is very interesting because these are conversations I'm having in Ghana today with persons who were around in the 50s and 60s planning the development of West Africa. And I would always reflect on my undergraduate days as a economic historian in a British university in the 70s. And um, one of my professors would always say, if you, if you wish to understand economic development, if you wish to be an economic historian, I suggest you begin with Arthur Lewis. And what was remarkable about those conversations in a British university was that while he was celebrated and seen as the person who will take the post-colonial world out of that morass and bring global development, at the same time, there was another Caribbean scholar whose name was frowned upon, and his name was Eric Williams. And we would be in seminars surrounded by professors who are celebrating Arthur Lewis and the name Eric Williams for capitalism and slavery. These two names were pulled apart in our seminar discourses, and I couldn't conceptualize the reason for that. It was a very famous morning for me when I went to have a look at Labor, labor in the West Indies. That remarkable little pamphlet written by Sir Arthur in the aftermath of the 1930s workers' rebellions in the Caribbean. And there is that beautiful sentence. To my mind, no Caribbean economist has picked up on this, on this sentence. I have not seen it quoted, cited anywhere by any Caribbean economist. A simple line, 1944, in which he says, and the question of 200 years of unpaid slave labor in the Caribbean is yet to be addressed. Reparatory justice. The concept of 200 years of unpaid slave labor in the Caribbean is yet to be addressed. 1944. Which therefore brought Arthur Lewis and Eric Williams into a conceptual unity for action. We are in a privileged position to be celebrating the evergreen nature of this, of this intellect. I was honored to 
from time to time meet with him when he was in residence at Cave Hill. And I had just joined the faculty there back in the mid 80s. And this very dignified gentleman would be just walking around the campus quietly. Very few people knew of his identity. I would have vouched that 90% of the students wouldn't have recognized that gentleman walking around the campus quietly. And it was just Sir Arthur Lewis who had conceptualized the Kefil campus, who was the architect of the Kefil campus, who said, let there be a campus of UWI in the Eastern Caribbean. He was the father of UWI at Kefil. But he would quietly walk around Kefil, and very few people knew. And we would have those conversations about his thinking, his strategy. And he would always say, there was only one motivational force in my entire life. To distance the Caribbean and to distance Africa and to distance all of the colonial societies away from poverty, hunger, and malnutrition. That was my passion to remove these societies from the colonial scaffold and launch them into development. The celebration of such a man is more than worthy of a university. He is much more than a founding member of the intellectual traditions of UWI and of the Caribbean. He was arguably the first of our passionate scholars to move beyond academia into the field of the implementation of strategy and policy and the building of institutions for that purpose. Dr. Figaro, I had no difficulty in rising in support of your initiative when you called upon me, simply because it is, it is impatient of debate. To his family, we say to you, we'll, we thank you. I'm not sure how much of him you saw, because he was in great demand all over the world. Wherever there was poverty, wherever there was underdevelopment, wherever there was stagnation, uh, he was the mind that was in need. So we thank you for giving him to us. And Dr. Smith, you can also add to your Jamaican ownership of him that he had family roots in Antigua. And I do believe it's the Antiguans who claim that they first conceptualized this great mind. So this is a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's a great moment of celebration. And I'm happy as a member of the university community to be a part of it. I thank you.